as the score right now is Laney at 31 and 20. And you can hear the engine pick up down the back straightaway, and that is purely the difference in the way that the wind is blowing. Down the back straightaway, it's at their tail. Down the front straightaway, it's at their nose, and it's it sounds like a couple hundred RPM difference. And it, it sounded to me like it picked up like that bump really engaged that one. Wow, and it took off it like it launched off of the bump. And the wind has picked up. Briscoe is fifth of six with a 31-30. He is the first driver whose time falls off from round one, and it's by five one hundredths of a second. Now that's where that wind could you hear him coming to pit road, practicing coming to pit road. That's where that wind could play a difference. All the Team Penske cars in the final round. Here is Austin Sindrick, the second of the three, who also had a 31-25 in round one. When I see a car slow down from their first time, we heard Larry tell us that the temperature's being up and the oils, the fluids are going to be faster. We know he looks sedated and he's going to be better on his launch for the second time practice. If he's slower, maybe that wind has a contributing factor. According to our data, Cindric Brad fifth gear at 7,900 RPM. I think that's the perfect number right there. 7,900 magic. What if I remember correctly that the, the, the ship number was actually, it would either be 7,800 or 8,200, but nope. I think 7,900 is right in the, right in the sweet spot. And I'm of the opinion that if you slow down, something didn't go right. I mean, it could be the wind, but you know, a lot of these guys are picking up a tenth and a half, and, and if you don't pick up something, the process didn't go right, launch, shifting, or you didn't didn't cool it down. You didn't cool it down properly. Larry told us the wind. Okay, but I think measurably between the first five going and that break to the next five, the wind has picked up. Cindric is fifth at a 31.29. You love that, don't you, Clint? He backed me. Yeah. He backed Well, he's four one hundred slower than... Uh, then round one, Briscoe was five one hundred slower. And look, those flags are straight. Uh, we don't have an anemometer up here, but those flags are straight out. But that was our first true time that we disagreed. That was our first disagreement, and it felt so good. I'm not disagreeing with you. I feel I, like I won. I just stick it. I stick things out from the from the driver side of things. Sometimes we have to dumb it down for you to, to make it all make sense. Hey, you and, can and the, and the, however look you at want. Look at the flag. Look at the flag down there. Right. right. Meanwhile, hey, there's Clint, a plot. Clint thinks 7,900 is a sweet spot. Kyle Busch chipped at 7,200. 7,200. It ain't over yet, Larry. It's not over. Todd Gilliland, 31,22 on lap one. That's close. That's thousands right there. was told there was some radio chatter there where the car was told that maybe the wind perhaps was a little bit calmer for the eight laps of Kyle Busch. Well, it sure looked like the wind might have been a little calmer down the back stretch that time with the 38 car gaining a little bit of ground, but it's going to be close. Very close. Good run for them, nonetheless. Second by three one hundredths is Todd Gilliland. He runs a 31-13, which means he picks up nine one hundredths of a second. If Kyle wins this, Ringer James is going to have to get inside that car for this interview. Maybe he's going to go out and do some donuts. He's not something. getting he's, out. He's not getting out. And I was kind of that way. It's like, all right, well, I, want, I want it to be good, so I need to just sit here and not change anything until it's over. Speaking of good, yep. this lap is going to be one. Was front row at the Daytona 500 last week and was one of our first two in the first round of qualifying. Keep an eye on Joey Logano. No matter what happens, this is going to be Todd Gilliland's best career start at Atlanta here tomorrow as Joey Logano, pole sitter for the Daytona 500, who ran a 31-20 in round one. Well, Larry just reminded us that they still have work to do after this. They have pit road practice. That's why Kyle Busch is sitting in the car. Boys, he's all over it. It's going to be very close. The wind down the back stretch. Can it play a role in this? There's that bump again. You hear the RPM pick up, Kevin, as you alluded to. Staying very low in the racetrack. Now, what's this headwind going to be like off turn four? I don't know. I sure like the tail end down the back stretch. Looks good, guys. First place for Logano, 3107. Not near as much as I thought. 3107. Just a couple hundreds got the job done. Pick up 13 one hundredths. Similar to what Kyle Busch and Kyle Larson did. One left. 
Can it be the same front row? Well, Magal was fastest in round one with a 31-18. If he gets the same pickup Joey Logano did, obviously, he will go to the pole. Can he get a second straight front row start? Well, they sure have something figured out, don't they? Certainly put themselves in a situation to do so. Got two weeks in a row. Uh, doing a little cleanup out there. Travis Peterson uh, and his crew for Michael McDowell have certainly had speed. Yes, they have. Oh, it's a trash bag. And Michael certainly knows how to do a good job drafting. Won a Daytona 500, always up front when the time comes. Knows when to be patient, knows how to survive. All right, you're on the line. You got the fastest car. You're ready to go. You put it in gear, and they go, uh, trash bag out on the track. You'll have to wait. I got you, What's boy. that do? Well, it... <laughs> In this particular instance, it's 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 really about the process. I mean, Michael's thought about his process and going forward, but it definitely it definitely makes you a little bit more antsy just because of the fact that it's you've thought it out and then you're ready to go, and then it's like, all right, hold on. So you have to take a deep breath, rethink it all, and try to make it happen. I know thinking twice, Clint, would be tough for you, but you just keep it going. Yeah, I've been racked so far by the way. I know. I know. Tally is one good guys and none <laughs> you. So uh, if he shifts to seventy nine hundred, Larry. I mean, old Clint just, you know, might be. I got you covered, something. Clint. I got you, buddy. If it's if it's on seventy nine hundred, I think the he's got it. For you. Yep. So you're 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 saying if McDowell, McDowell shifts it right, he's going to get the pole. I am convinced, convinced. of it. All right, the track truck scurries for cover, gets behind the wall, and now we have a clear track for Michael McDowell, who will be our final qualifier. What is? It? Start to see him inch ahead as he gets into one or two. We saw this with those other two cars, Logano and Bush. It's a lot closer than you think when you see this. Paul Wolf is crew chief. That's Logano's crew chief looking on. He probably doesn't like what he sees. <laughs> No one has ever started 467 races and then won his first pole. Michael McDowell has done it. That's a big lap. Only car to break in the 32nd category, Larry. That was that 7900 shift. You know it was. Well, it was definitely the the right. Um, Heck yeah, bro, brother. Was the the right lap? Go ahead and say it was 7100 that he shifted. So I told you. Good thing we didn't I listen to you. Clint. Yeah. And I Michael McDowell you. did what he thought was right but shifted exactly the right way. That's awesome. Way. 